Retura Quest. This third video dealing with arrangement is, in my opinion, one of the best of the three, or is certainly the best of the three. Because it tells you about a kind of arrangement that's been that's worked and worked well for more than well, almost two thousand years, maybe a little more than two thousand years. Uh, and this order that I call the ancient order, uh, it was developed. It was originally written in a book called the Rhetoric Rhetorica at Herenium, which a lot of people thought was written by Cicero. Then other people said was it written by Cicero? And in the end, I guess it really doesn't matter who wrote the who wrote the book because the book itself is brilliant. And in that book, he told the writer told us about a way of putting together a speech that makes people make decisions. Well, you remember Monroe's motivated sequence that helped you make decisions uh, emotionally. Well, this one doesn't re doesn't disregard the emotional decision making. But remember when we talked about the canon of invention and we talked about the artistic proofs. We talked about logos, ethos, and pathos. That's why I love this method of arrangement more than all of the others. The ancient order, the one I'm going to talk to you about today, involves the ethos, logos, and pathos. So that a person who makes a decision based on this speech is making a decision as a whole person, not just an emotional decision, not just a logical decision, and not just a decision made on the leadership of somebody they're following. Here's how it works. The ancient order includes the exordium. You begin with the exordium. The exordium, well, we can call it a greeting. And in that greeting, in that exordium, you tell who you are and why you are qualified to speak. Now you might say, well, I'm not really qualified to speak, but you are. If you've gotten up to give a speech, probably you've gone and you've done some study on that subject. So you talk a little bit about that. So I would say, my name is Dr. Benjamin Klein. Uh, I've been studying public speaking and rhetoric for, uh, well, if you count uh, my undergraduate degree, more than 20 years uh, I've been studying uh, rhetoric and and. Uh, and, and public speaking. And I am going to give you from the research what I've given you today. So I can I could do that. I could do an exordium like that. Or I could kind of do what I did before. I could talk about why this idea is something qualified to be talked about. That's what I did in this presentation here. I, I build it up and I said, you know, other, other forms of arrangement do this, other forms of arrangement do that. But this form of arrangement brings you in as a full person. That's kind of what I did here. That is an exordium. Then you go into a narratio. A narratio is a kind of story. Now, some of you may have heard at some point, it's a good idea to begin your speech with a joke. It puts you and the audience at ease. A joke is fine. It's fine to begin with a joke. And that narratio can be a joke. It does need to be a story. And whether it's a funny story, or a sad story, or a story that makes people angry, or a story that makes people feel nostalgic, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is that you have a story there that moves your audience's emotion and has to do with what you're talking about. I went to a church for a little while, and the pastor at that church had heard at some point you should always start out with a joke. And he always got up and told a joke. And the joke almost never had anything to do with the rest of his presentation. No, that's not what you should do. You go into the exordium where you tell who, who you are and why you're qualified to speak. And then you go into the narratio and you tell an emotional story, which can be funny, that has to do with the rest of your speech. Then you go into the partitio. The partitio or partition, uh, the partitio, is where we start to 
tell what's going to go on in the speech. If you remember from the simple speech, uh, your main points, your, uh, your, you preview your main points in the preview. It's kind of what you do in the Particio, too. You go through and in one sentence explain what you're going to prove and how you're going to prove it. Sum up those main points in a single sentence. And then you go into the confirmatio. The confirmatio probably corresponds pretty well to the body of your speech. The confirmatio, in the confirmatio, you prove each of your main points. You confirm them in the confirmatio. You prove them. You show that this is what you're doing. That's what you do in the confirmatio. Once you're done with the confirmatio, you then go into a refutatio. And this is one of the reasons I really like this method as opposed to some of the other methods we might use. See, in this method, in, when we have the refutatio, there's actually a place where we can go in and say, you know what? Some people might disagree with me. Some people might say this isn't the best way to, to do it. Some people might, say, might disagree with my argument. Here's why they would disagree, and here's why I think they'd be wrong if they disagree. You do that, you have that kind of uh, uh, place where you have that refutatio, and it makes, it makes you look like you're a whole lot smarter than if you just went through and gave your side of the argument. You give both sides of the argument, and explain why yours is better. It's good. Finally, you go into the parallel ratio. Now, if you remember from talking about Monroe's motivated sequence, uh, it's a call to action, and this is too. And it's also an emotional call to action. This is the place where we say you should pull out all the rhetorical stops. Uh, one of my uh, graduate professors, uh, J. Michael Sproul, always said that. He said, pull out all the rhetorical stops. And he, he would always say that. That's what you should do in the, in the para ratio. You should lay on the emotion. You should lay on the, the cool little things that you can do with language. You should make it big and expansive. This ancient order was the only type of speech ever used by Martin Luther King Jr. And what we remember of Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches, those things that stick in our mind, for instance, in his most famous speech, that I have a dream that one day, see that, we remember that, that was his para ratio. That's where he pulled out all the rhetorical stops. That's where he laid into it. That's where he got emotional. And that's where you should, too. I strongly recommend that you consider the ancient order when you're going to give a speech. The simple speech that we talked about before, hey, it's another method. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with using it. Uh, it's, it's clear. It's easy. And I use it. A lot of times when somebody tells me, I need you to talk about something in an hour or two, and I have maybe an hour or two to put together a speech, I use that simple speech. Monroe's motivated sequence, I use that too. Sure I do. Sometimes I just want people to make a quick decision. I want to jump into it. I want to go right into it. I want to draw them in and pull them in, make the decision, and then it's over. You know, close the deal right there real quick, and that's fine. But what I love about the ancient order, and the reason I'm really hoping that you consider using the ancient order in your speech, is because it really does take all of this. At the beginning, you build your ethos. You explain why you're qualified to, te to, to speak on this subject. It builds your pathos. You've got the narratio and the para ratio. The narratio towards the beginning, the para ratio at the very end, where you can really make it emotional. But there in the center, in that meat, is logic and making your points clear. And if you can get all of these into your speech, it can be a really, truly great speech. And that's what I want for you. Okay, in these videos, we've covered invention, arrangement, and delivery.
We've still got style and memory to talk about, and so we, we've got at least at least uh, two more canons to cover. But we've covered three. Uh, we are more than halfway done with this video lecture series. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're getting a lot out of it, and I hope to see you soon because we are going to start talking in the next video about style, how to put our words together in an effective and powerful way. So I'll see you later.